guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis. Today is a new day and we have a new drone in the house. It's the Alsin Ma CGO35. It is the non 5.8 gigahertz gimbal version, but I'm gonna show you how to put this little credit card gimbal on there. We're gonna run a run cam two on the bottom and we're gonna get really good video from this little cheap economical setup. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm gonna also show you what comes in the box going to show you some of the features and some of the modes that it has like follow me and orbit mode. It is a really cool drone that in fact that it has all these modes crammed in such a little tiny and portable package. So let's go ahead and show you some of the features and after that we'll go out to the field and fly it together. Okay guys here it is the CGO 35 up on the turntable and ready for you guys to look at from all sides. There's the battery bay in the very back motors on the side they are 1806 2300 kv so they are quite powerful motors on here and one of my favorite parts about this copter is the fact that it has props on here that we can replace with almost any brand so if you get a six inch prop it should fit on here just fine i believe these are three millimeter shafts on here so you can use props other than what are made for this one so that's pretty nice you could actually put some tri props on here if you wanted to but be careful because you do have 12 amp ESC's and you don't want to blow up your ESC's putting too much prop uh, on a copter like this you want to use those single bladed props probably the best option now it does have really nice landing gear on the bottom that provide about three inches of clearance between the ground and the drone itself um, I did measure it a little bit earlier but I'll go ahead and show you there right about three inches of space for any other type of gimbal you wanted to put on there whether it's that additional gimbal that you can buy for it or if you buy the gimbaled version now looking at the top of the drone it does say gps right here and i'm not totally sure that that's glonass gps however it does have nice features like altitude hold and it has what i call gps lock so it stays in one spot in a hover when you have hands off the sticks and that's really nice it also does orbit mode which will orbit around the transmitter and follow me mode and also return to home so you have to be in gps mode to do any of those modes uh, on this cgo 35 so let's take a look at the other features on there as well you do have vent holes front and rear that's very important so the escs can have proper cooling while you're flying and let's just spin around and take a look at the bottom you have the battery bay in the very back. You're going to slide that in until it locks into place. Once you have that into place, you're going to click the little on off button. Now, one thing I want to remind you is this is a GPS drone. So the transmitter will turn on first and then you'll turn on the drone afterwards and you'll wait a minute to two minutes to let this GPS load fully. There is an LED on the transmitter that'll show you when you have a full coverage for GPS and a home lock before you take off. So also on the bottom, we have LEDs front and rear on the arms, as well as underneath the motor mounts. And those should change colors to show you the different modes that you're in uh, and corresponding with your manual. We, on the left over here, we have points for hooking up the gimbal. Now in the manual, it does say earth for the ground. So don't get that confused folks. That's just Google translation gone wrong. Ground is the black wire. So wherever they have earth labeled is where you want to put your ground wire. So when you're plugging in your wires, you don't get those mixed up because you might actually fry something. So pay close attention to that in the manual. Now over here on the side of the drone, I do see a USB port. I'm not 100% sure if that's for downloading the photos or the firmware. It might possibly be for future firmware updates. And you also have LEDs in the front, sort of cat-like eyes in the front. Kind of cool looking. Now, also in the package, you do get extra set of props in here with an extra screwdriver. And that'll be for putting through the hole. There's a little guide hole in the very top of this bullet prop mount um, that you can twist with the screwdriver and it'll unlock that. They should be clockwise and counterclockwise. They are labeled uh, by color. So you'll see red here and this red is gonna be your counterclockwise motor and the black being your clockwise motor. Now also in the box comes your battery charger. This is 
four volt battery charger good enough for your battery you're going to plug that into any usb port and this light will blink red and you'll get a green blinking light here when the battery is fully charged you have your balance ports here so it looks like we could charge two at the same time now if you got the non-gimbaled version guys i want to show you how to do this credit card gimbal it's very simple all you need is a pair of scissors some velcro and something to punch holes in the credit card so you're going to take some Velcro, put the fuzzy piece, the thicker piece underneath here where the gimbal would normally attach. Now take your credit card and cut a credit card in half. Any old credit card will do. Punch four holes at the corners on both pieces of credit card and cut yourself a little divot on one side here to secure your Velcro strap. And what I did was I took a little piece of Velcro, two pieces, and I stuck in between the camera and this bottom plate just to give it a little more dampening. And I have a hard piece of Velcro on the very top. So once I stick this on the drone, it's enough Velcro here to hold it on the drone and also give it just a little more dampening while we're flying. And it's not going to come loose while I'm flying at all. Um, so no worries there. And the little zip ties on the bottom are also going to give us nice smooth and stable video. I've used this on other toy quads and it works really really well and the run cam too has really really bright colors so it's going to make nice video and it's really easy to take on and off and very very portable. Now when you place your velcro on the bottom make sure that you put it far enough forward on the drone that it clears the front end of the drone so that we don't see the arms when we're filming. So the goal is, is to get it far forward enough that we don't see any props or arms, but that's going to be determined uh, once we do our flying test. We'll see how good that is. Now this is the radio that comes with the aircraft. I want to give you a quick overview. I did take the time to label all the switches on here for you, and I highly suggest that you do this with yours. Uh, I'm going to start out with the first and most important switches on the very top. This is the SWB switch, and this is your normal flight mode, GPS, and return to home. In position one, you have normal, position two, GPS, and three, return to home. Now to activate the follow me in orbit modes, you need to be in GPS. Make sure you do that when you do try to go into something like orbit uh, or hitting the follow me button up here. SWA switch on the right hand side, you're going to have your fixed point mode, which is essentially when you're flying in normal or GPS modes, this will let it fly normally. Now when you go into orbit, that's going to throw you into the rotation around yourself. So make sure you have plenty of room from trees and obstacles, buildings, power lines, etc. Uh, number three position down is headless mode and that's where we can do our sort of fixed pans and stay on a, a course. In the middle you have your power button and your control gimbals here. This is also setting up mode one or mode two. There's instructions on how to do that in the manual. These three buttons in the center, these are kind of neat buttons. I haven't seen these on controller before. Gimbal control button for up, down, left, and right. I don't have the gimbal on mine, so I won't need this one, but I did label it to show you. In the middle, we have the landing key or the takeoff key. If you hold that and press it three seconds, you should do an auto takeoff. On the right hand button here, we have a screen switch button. I don't have the video monitor, so I'm not worried about that one very bottom are four LEDs and all these LEDs represent something different. Um, come a little closer here. I'll try to get it to focus for you. This far right one, this is the GPS LED. If this turns on, you're going to need to wait for a minute or two for the GPS to load on the aircraft. Now this represents the GPS on the aircraft. When the red light goes out, you're good to take off. The second one over is the GPS for the radio because this is controlling the orbit mode and the follow me modes that come along with this drone. Once that goes out, the GPS is loaded to the radio, so you're good to work with those modes. Now the third LED over here, this is your range warning LED. This will come on and show you red if you get close to the end of your range, so you'll know to turn around and come back so you don't lose frequency uh, connection to your copter. Now the fourth one over is the battery LED and that one's going to show red if you get low battery on the aircraft or the, the radio itself and it's going to emit a buzzing sound if you do get low. On the very top we also have a few more buttons to show you. Photo button up here and the video button on SWD. On the right hand side you have follow me button and your change frequency button. Now also your antenna on the top. These two pieces that stick up up here, they are not 
uh, functional. Now on the back, we have four AA batteries. I'm using my rechargeables. And your neck strap connects right here in the center. So I like to wear that when I'm out at the field. So let's take a look at the battery. Now, last but not least is the battery. It's a 7.4 volt, two cell, 2200 milliamp battery. And it does have a Dean's connector here. So you can charge this from a standalone charger. If you have something like this, a little connector that will connect to your charger, you can charge it on your regular charger, or you can use this balance lead here. It's kind of tucked away inside this little hole. It comes out and plugs into the charger that comes along with your drone. So when you're done, you can take that and tuck it back in that hole when you're ready to fly. Make sure the cables are nice and neatly tucked in there. Uh, use a pin or something to pull it back out, but pretty cool that this battery is chargeable with the battery charger that comes with it or your standalone charger. Uh, and very lastly, we have the manual that comes along with it. Read this, go over, it's very important. It does have a lot of inf interesting information that you're gonna need to know about this drone in there. However, this video hopefully will decipher a lot of this broken English in this manual. So I'll tell you what guys, let's go outside and fly this one and I'll show you some of the cool modes that are coming along with the CGO 35. Okay guys, here we are outdoors and it's a little bit windy right now, but we're gonna do this flight test anyway. I have the Runcam 2 recording and the GPS is loaded up on here, so we should be able to take off. The red lights did go off. You can see there's no red lights on the transmitter, so we should be go. We should be good to go. Here we go. Let's go ahead and try to take off real quick. I am in GPS mode. Make sure that you calibrate your compass first before you do take off. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm it. And I'm gonna do a one button takeoff. It should come up off the ground. Here we go. So now we're gonna try out this little GPS stable hover. We're gonna see how stable it is. Looking good so far. It is moving quite a bit to try to counteract the wind. It's quite a bit of wind. But it looks good so far. So let's go up a little higher. And that's about a punch out, folks. It's not super fast. And it doesn't have a lot of angle mode, so I really don't want to fly up and too far away because you know what? We'll lose it. But it's looking really nice so far. I'm going to try not to hit a tree. It is drifting quite a bit. But it really does look pretty cool in the air. It looks like a mini Phantom. And I'm in GPS right now. I can go into normal flying mode to get a little faster, more aggressive tilt. So now I'm able to fly without that GPS hold on there. And if it's a windy condition, I, I would suggest flipping into that mode because you're gonna be able to fight the wind better with a little more angle. You can see how there's a little more angle in it now. And I have way more control of the copter. But you're gonna have to work on your throttle as well because you can see how it kind of dips up and down a little bit but it's flying pretty true right now got to keep in mind those trees over on my right I'm gonna go back into GPS GPS should give me a nice altitude hold and I'm kind of keeping it low to the ground you kind of see those trees up there in the wind Well, you're going to see how well this credit card gimbal performs. It should be performing pretty well. Pretty smooth video, even in really windy conditions. I do see that the copter is kind of shaking a little bit, but I think that's the accelerometer kind of working over time in these windy conditions. It's a nice day to fly today, so I had to come out here and fly this for you. I like the LEDs in the wind. Or it, I like the LEDs up underneath the copter. They do look really cool. You got green in the rear and blue in the front. And those do change to red in the rear if I slip over into normal mode. If I flip that right or left, excuse me, if I flip that left switch, 
the rear LEDs do change to, to red. If I flip back into GPS, lock, it goes green in the rear. That's pretty cool. And now return to home will probably go, I would think they would switch into red, but they did go into green and it's going up. I'm gonna switch out of that because I know that will work. It's a little windy because it, it does want to go a little bit higher. So I got someone coming over here, so I'm not gonna fly over top of that person. You wanna make sure you don't fly over top of people. I'm gonna come back down this little pathway here. There are people out and about today, so you gotta keep a lookout. You wanna look right and left when you're flying most of the time. Now I want to try out that follow me mode. I'm going to make sure I'm in GPS here. And follow me will work on that top switch, the SWC switch. So I'm going to bring it over closer to me. Going to make sure I don't get run over by some runners. And hit follow me. And now it should follow, should follow the camera. Now it's in follow and it turned. And it looks like it's doing its job pretty well. Even with all this wind, that's pretty nice. Now when I get a little further out here, I'm gonna try out the orbit mode. So I'll take it out of follow me. I know that works. That's working pretty well actually with this wind. So I'm gonna take it out of that. So now it's just hovering in place. And I'll go ahead and switch into orbit. There we go. Now it's in the orbit mode, that's nice. It's not perfect around the transmitter. But not bad. So I'm gonna switch back out of orbit mode. And I'm gonna try out headless mode real quick. Headless mode is that tracking mode where if you are doing pans left and right, it'll stay on a certain direction see it drift in that certain direction and it's going to hold that position nice so now I'm back into GPS flying mode and it really does hover quite nice really nice for all this wind and it's very very windy up there so nice rock solid hover in GPS mode so now we're going to go back to the re return to home point. Now I'm going to come over here and land on the landing pad, or attempt to. Here we go. A little bit windy, so. Alright, to disarm your motors, guys, you're going to hold that stick down for a couple seconds, and it should disarm it. If you see a red light go off over here, that means your battery's low, so make sure you come in land quick as you can. So that's it for this review. This was a lot of fun. This is kind of like a mini Phantom. You can check out the link below from GearBest.com and grab yourself one of these. So hope you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the onboard footage as well from the Run Cam 2. Pretty nice quad, guys.